Sure. I'm Sarah Klein, and I'm the chef here. I'm Dave Moses. I'm the sous chef. I've been working here since June, so Moses has been here from the get-go. He can tell you more about the startup of it. I talked to Brian, the owner, in April. Actually, in, in April, I stopped in just to check out the kitchen. And I was really excited to have a new restaurant opening up in town, and I really respect what Brian had created in Karma, and he's incredible to work for, also. So there wasn't a position open that would fully utilize my skills at that point, but then in June something opened up and so Brian and I got together and here I am. Day one was a bit of a kerfuffle. <laughs> it was, uh, well we drafted up a, a menu trying to be classy yet acceptable and accessible, but not too pedestrian. But like, so basically anyone from any walk of life could come in and find something on the menu they'd enjoy and still well executed. Some, some of the southern influence stuff is really popular. We're doing a blackened catfish po' boy for our, our fall menu. Right now it's a full entree plate, but we're changing some of the menu items starting September 25th. So right now we're in process of developing that. We also want to bring in some influences for people who live here. So we're looking at doing a house-made pierogi plate with kielbasa and some braised red cabbage. And then also food that goes with beer, food you can pick up with your hands. Our grilled artichoke hearts are really, really popular, and because we do have 24 taps here, we're going to also be doing mussels steamed with beer, so that not only are people drinking the beer, but they're seeing that you can cook with it, and it's great. Not all of it is local, because not everything is available locally, and it's also really important to us to have quality ingredients. So, for example, our ground beef is grass-fed and humanely raised. It's not from here, because we don't want to charge $15 for a hamburger. We try and pay attention to what's reasonable. So we're able to source that consistently at an affordable price for us. But right now, lots of our vegetables are local. Uh, most of the cheeses are regional. So we certainly try and source as much as we possibly can from here. I mean, there's always the argument you make, like, what is local? Like, from the Pioneer Valley, from Massachusetts, from New England. And we don't go too much farther than that. Like, yeah, all of our cheeses right now are from Massachusetts. Uh, most of our vegetables come from where is Red, Red Fire? Red Fire, Granby, and Montague, Granby, and, the, yeah. and the Tuesday Farmer's Market yes. is where most of them are from right now, also. I've lived all over the place. I went to Hampshire College years ago, and then I've lived every place from New York City, Seattle, Tucson. I taught at a cooking school in Vermont for a couple of years, and then I was looking to move away from Vermont and found some opportunities here, so I came back, because there's so much that goes on in this area. Music, art. It, Food, just uh, all the farmers markets are incredible also and we really try and use the local stuff when we can. I've been living in the area for about six years, uh, bouncing from restaurant to restaurant, trying to find one that fit really well and this is, this is really the first one that I found that, that kind of embraced me and my style and it's, it's really, really nice, it's really accepting place that we've got here. Hard to say, I think the Dirty Truth has a few more taps than we do. I think they have 35, and we have 30? We have uh, 24 on this floor, and then I think another six mm -hmm. upstairs. Yeah, so 30 total. Yep. And have, it's uh, constantly rotating. Except for one. We have one valley-based, uh, it's not a beer, it's, it's a libation. It's called Ginger Libation. It's made in Greenfield, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's the only one that never moves. Everything else, I mean, a lot of these micro brews from around the country, there, it's really hard to get. Uh, they're in such high demand, so we have to rotate through the beers. But we'll usually have an IPA, a Pilsner, uh, usually a Belgian, and then some kind of darker beer. But we'll, we try to stack it as much as we can. But on the on the busy weekends, we'll just fly through kegs. I mean, I just checked in 12 kegs today. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> for the three floors that we have, this main floor is the restaurant. So when people are here for dinner, we, we open at 4 every day, and we're serving a full dinner menu from 4 until 10. So this is the main dining floor. We do have seating upstairs from four until about eight-ish, depending on what the event is upstairs. So when we're busy, people sit upstairs to eat as well. The third floor has a pool table, and that's where people have more of a lounge. There's some red leather couches up there, and that's where people hang out. And then the second level becomes the dance floor, and that's where the stage is, and there's a smaller bar up there also where people can hang out. Right now it's, it's everybody and we're really excited to see what happens when students come back to town also. So we've got a range of families coming in with their kids to people coming in for late night hip hop, 
rep events. It's really interesting. Our clientele is usually depicted by the night of the week because we have, well, we have poetry on Tuesdays, so we get a really young crowd mixed with a bunch of older locals, but then like Friday and Saturday when we have our DJs and our local bands, it's usually early 20-somethings and students in full force. And oh, yeah, yeah, this bar will be three, four deep for hours. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a sight. I think the space is really welcoming also. This is where I would want to come and hang out and sit at the bar and have dinner. And on my nights off, that's a lot of the time where you'll find me.